So first of all, um, an introduction to Kijiji, and uh, these guys are getting tired of hearing about this, but I, I'm loving, loving Wikipedia this week because uh, I got lazy making this presentation, and I said, well, let's see what Wikipedia defines Kijiji as, and um, I could not have written a better definition myself. Um, first of all, Kijiji is a Swahili word, and it means village. So that was the whole purpose of using that particular word and naming this brand when, when eBay created it, um, which is closer to nine years ago, but I've been there seven. Um, <clears throat> it's a centralized network of online communities, urban communities really is the keyword in this one, uh, for posting local online classified ads. Um, so really it's a platform to connect users who are looking to trade. And so, you know, it's buying and selling and items. And in, uh, in this particular case, it's uh, the rehoming of pets also. When we started in uh, 2005, uh, we launched in Quebec, and that was really a, a strategic move because our competitor Craigslist was not very good at the French stuff because they were an American company. So, um, and then uh, our platform at that time was to really to drive towards the, the commerce side, which was uh, targeting people who were selling used baby goods. And uh, we did that because, you know, that there's a really high turnover of those, and it seems that mommies are always willing to trade off their clothing and their strollers and everything as they uh, wore up fairly quickly. Uh, now, we are uh, over 100 communities strong. We're in just every major city or most major communities in all of Canada. Um, and we have a reach of 15 plus million Canadians every month. So that means they're all coming to see us every single month. Um, now, from my perspective, when I came on at Kijiji, we were five people. Um, I was the sixth person to get employed at Kijiji Canada. I was uh, um, in an office with a you know, head of um, finance, a head of marketing, um, a head of sales. And, uh, and you know, so we made decisions sort of like a startup. We were like, hey, what do you guys want to do this week? Let's try this, let's try this. But now we're, uh, we're 150 people um, in our office and we have a number of people who work from home also. So um, things aren't exactly the way they were, you know, seven years ago for me personally. Um, so that being said, uh, now this is gonna be impossible for you to read unless you have really, really good vision. Um, this, some, some more statistics about Kijiji. Again, this isn't, uh, this isn't reaching BC quite the way it reaches everywhere else, um, Vancouver specifically. But this is a, a quick chart from a website called Comscore, which tracks internet activity. And uh, this is our activity in our pets category. Uh, if you look at the very top here, you'll see the reach obviously is 100% for internet audience. This one below it is 11% of, of the total audience of the internet goes to pet related, or they call it lifestyle pets websites. Um, of that 11%, 4.9% of that go to Kijiji. So that's about a third of the reach of the people who are currently visiting pet-related websites, according to this website, Comscore. Now you'll see there's a number of websites there that are very familiar. There's PetFinder and PetSmart and uh, PetTango. A lot of those websites are, 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 are very entrenched in your industry. Um, and so that equates to about 1.3 million unique visitors every month in the pets category of Kijiji.ca. Um, and I'm glad I mentioned these other guys because I think one thing that I, I haven't mentioned in my, in my previous keynotes is that um, I'm here to discuss Kijiji's role in the urban animal strategy, but I think what's important and, and what I really want to get out there is I want to talk about the role of, of websites in general. And we're talking about a consistent communication piece here. Um, and I think it's the role of all of, the, all of us who are connected to you um, to take a consistent message forward. But I'll get to that. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Um, further to my, uh, my reach, piece here, Kijiji also has a very high engagement level with our communities. Um, we use very regional based marketing because we're, you know, we're dealing with local trading. We don't encourage like eBay where people can ship things across Canada. We really push the local trading model. So we want people to meet in person in a safe place and do safe transacting. So uh, all of our marketing is based on what's you know, hot in that region and what we do in that area. And what the communication is, is regionalized and it, it make, it's targeted towards the people in each community. So for that reason, you know, uh, our, our communication is key. Okay, our engagement with our users. We get about 5,000 emails a week. We also get about 5,000 on average um, live chats, which are just live communication with our users. We have people on standby waiting to talk to our users. And those users are reaching out to us to, uh, ask questions about their ads, ask questions about other people's ads. Uh, more importantly, they're contacting us to flag ads. They have a problem with an ad, they see something that looks a little sketchy. That's where we communicate with those users. Also, we have a Facebook page that has 340,000 likes. Um, so we reach out to that group quite regularly. Uh, if you have seen our Facebook page, we do uh, target regionally also, but we do also blast information to people across the map all the time. 
Um, also on Twitter, 24,000 followers. Uh, we don't use Twitter as much, but we sort of use it reactively to engage with our users. Now, taking the engagement piece to the next level, I want to bring to you what I consider to be a bit of a missed opportunity um, so far in this industry from our standpoint. Um, every time that we do engage with our users, um, you know, I showed you all the ways that we do it sort of uh, making ourselves available, but this here is a, a, an ad. Okay, and every time that we engage with our users, not only in communication or social media or um, our own our community support team, when the users use our website, we're also communicating with them. And I, I call these moments of truth. Okay, these users, we're talking about uh, you know the, uh, the health and wellness group in the last presentation uh, mentioned that uh, when people come to them, it's usually too late to communicate. Well, um, you know, we're at a position here uh, where it's not too late to communicate with users. These are moments of truth. This right here is an ad. This is a, a dog for adoption from the, uh, actually, the Toronto Humane Society um, on Kijiji. And so we have two places here where the user is sort of force-fed information. On the right-hand side here where the first arrow is, or the one closest to me, that's where they're going to respond to an ad. So a user who's on this page is, uh, has reached the point where they've decided they may be interested in this dog. And so they go into this section here to reply to that ad. And in replying to that ad, they're going to tell them, you know, hey, I'm interested. Uh, now this is Toronto Humane Society, we're, they're a bit of a trusted source for us, um, but still, we're, we're faced with a moment of truth here. This person is interested in a dog, is about to make a decision, they're about to pull the trigger, and, uh, and so we have an opportunity to message that person, to give them the right information. Okay, here we have, we made them agree to some policies that we have, because Kijiji has, to, has very strict policies, um, and, but as you can see, they're just linked here, and we say, hey, by clicking here, you agree to these policies. Um, the other arrow is where we kind of force feed them information. That's a, that's a responsible rehoming piece that we created with the help of a number of animal welfare groups and took some information from like Calgary Humane Society and Ontario SPCA. Uh, we compiled some information that we feel is important to force feed to a user who's considering a dog or a cat or rehoming any animal. And we have that in there and we're force feeding that to them. But uh, that information, we went out and we kind of piecemealed from a group here and there who had something either posted on their site with their permission. We say, can we steal a little bit of this for our own page? And so we kind of had to create our own based on this group's information that you're broadcasting. And so with permission, and that was a lot of work, I don't need to tell you. Um, so again, we have a moment of truth here. This person's about to make a decision and we're trying to feed them information. So on the other side of the coin, this is uh, just a cut and paste of our uh, post ad flow, which is where our user's posting an ad. Here we have a source who's about to post an animal available for adoption or sale. And, you know, same thing. We're at the bottom of the page here, they provided all the information they're going to provide, and they're about to click the submit button, which again, I call a moment of truth. Here, I force feed them information about our policies again, okay? And some of these are not policies based on what's best for Kijiji, but just what's best for the animal too. Uh, we have a thing here about the, uh, the Pedigree Act. We tell them they can't misrepresent a purebred animal. Uh, something there about not rehoming animals before they're eight weeks old. Um, and there's something there about our policy about trading locally, and that's just so we can protect users from getting animals shipped and that type of thing. But again, this is a source. They're posting an ad. Another moment of truth. We have an opportunity to educate this user. Okay, and I don't want to say we're failing this user because we're doing everything we can, but uh, we're here today to talk about how we can consistently message people. And uh, we happen to have a million and a half of them. So. Uh, that was the whole purpose of this. So the last one of the uh, communication pieces that we have, and uh, I mentioned our social pages, but our blog is full of information that we broadcast to our users and everything, it's more of a hub for all of the stuff that we send out. So, um, you know, everything we broadcast via social goes on to our, our, our blog. And uh, this is just a collaborative project we did with the Ontario SPCA. We produced a video um, about um, staying safe when trying to adopt a pet. And uh, so that's one of their, uh, their investigators, Agent Brad Dewar, who uh, was just giving tips. And some of our own Kijiji staff are in that video talking about their own experiences and uh, what you should do to stay safe when you're trying to rehome, to find an animal. Again, though, uh, this is another channel where people are coming to us and we need to, uh, to use proper communication. So again, getting back to what we've been talking about all day, messaging, I feel, is the most important thing that we currently lack, and, and it's not because it's not out there, it's because we don't know where to take. And I mean, every single one of you has a message. Um, I'm not a thought leader in this industry. 
I'm here to work with you, and you are all thought leaders in this industry. The problem is that you all have your own opinions. And if we can get a consistent message, well, let me just actually use our decks here, like I'm supposed to. We represent a great opportunity for you to not only reach out people who are looking for pets, but also sources, which we have established today is where the, where the issue lies, and we want to get in touch with sources and users. Okay, um, who were, was I talking to this morning that said, uh, um, don't discriminate, educate? Thank you, Yvonne. So, it, and I just feel like we have tried so hard to force feed information into our users, um, and we want to make sure that we can do that effectively. So, the, the issues we have are that there's too, too many great messages, which is a great problem to have, but it's not effective. So we have great messages, but it's coming from too many channels, it's, it's noise, it really is. Okay, so an effective, consistent message, obviously, is really, really what we need um, from an online um, perspective. And we all know the internet isn't going anywhere. So, I'm using the word responsible again, and I'm told that's bad. So I'm, I'll, I'll, I'm just going to say that uh, it's my fault because I'm a lay person. So I'm using the word responsible, but uh, the point is, if we expect users to act a certain way, um, we need really to properly communicate to those users what that way is. That we need that we need them to behave. Okay, so if we're going to talk about that today, um, you know, the resources are here in front of you. Not, and I don't mean me specifically. I showed you a chart of many websites who are very cooperative and they work with you every day. Um, and if if we have a, a consistent message, we can you know broadcast that quite clearly to people. And millions and millions of Canadians are on the internet every day. So we're here to talk. And, uh, and that's my mandatory fluffy cat picture of the day. And uh, I hope you enjoyed my magical Fruit Loop adventure. Thank you.